If AMD have had one constant over the past several years, it has been their relentless execution when it comes to releasing CPUs. Apart from the perhaps exception of the Zen Plus architecture finding its home in the Ryzen 2000 series processors as well as some Threadripper stuff as well, each generation of Zen has proven to be a big upgrade over the last and introducing numerous technologies and other enhancements. For example, triplets, increased core count, massive increases in IPC, clock frequency, features and so on and so forth. So the question is, what about the future? We've discussed on the channel, of course, quite a lot recently, both Zen 4 and how it differs over Zen 3, because, well, this stuff is now released. Zen 4 is mostly Zen 3 again, albeit minor enhancements in terms of IPC, but mostly it focused, of course, on clock frequency. For Intel, Raptor Lake is out and the refresh is coming later this year. There's not a whole amount I can say additional to what I already have on Raptor Lake refresh. It's going to be great probably for someone looking to buy like an i5 or something like that. But if you already own like a 13900K or other decent CPU, like even a 12900 series, you're not really going to want to upgrade to the Raptor Lake refresh. So if you are owning an older CPU or you've got the latest and greatest, the big question is what about the future? Specifically Zen 5. And as you probably guessed, we're going to be discussing Granite Ridge, Sarlacc, and even touching on some Zen 6 stuff in this very video. And that's right after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's get some of the obvious things out of the way first. Ryzen 8000 Granite Ridge is simply not launching this year. I've spoken about this numerous times at this point, and honestly, I've been given numerous release windows from Q2 to Q3 next year, but I think Q3 is much more likely, as pretty much all of my sources are telling me that at this stage. Now, of course, there will also be the release of the X3D chips, um, which will be roughly in the same uh, time schedule as the uh, vanilla to X3D releases, what we saw with previous generations. So this is going to, of course, mean early 2025 for, let's say, the 8950 X3D. As for the general specs for Granite Ridge, we're looking at 16 Zen 5 cores, that's across two CCDs, that's eight cores each, same as Zen 4, SMT2. I'm going to pause for a second because I know you guys have just fallen off your seats and you're going to need just a moment to recover from that surprise. 64 megabytes of L3 cache, so that of course would be the full configuration. 80 kilobytes of L1, that's not confirmed, but it seems quite likely. 1 megabyte of L2, that's per core of course, not total, there's 16 megabytes total. 128 megabytes of X3D, that's the highest end configuration, if applicable, obviously the non uh, X3D chips won't have that. There's about 6 gigahertz boost clocks. Now this is early days, and I'll talk more about this in just a moment. Uh, um, DDR5 support, I've heard two figures. One is 5600 MTS, and I've also heard... 6400. I am uncertain which is correct, so I'm going to put both figures in. Two RDNA 3 iGPU compute units. Obviously, this is just for basic Windows stuff. Up to 170 watts TDP, so no surprise there. I think that's also gotten leaked officially. Uh, Q3 2024, as I said, with an IO slash CCD. So the desktop is using uh, 4NM for the um, CCD. And the I.O. of course will be on N6 and this is naturally going to be on the AM5 platform which means if you have obviously a current board which is AM5 you can do a drop in upgrade. Now as for other information I've been hearing a lot of stuff generally about Zen 5. Certain configurations like dense will differ 
like for example the number of cores on a CCD but what about IPC well IPC is tricky because it tends to get mixed up when you're discussing performance for example how many threads which applications is it even true and even if all of that is accurate, is it IPC or is it IPC plus clock frequency? In the past, I was told the following, 20 to 25% by one source, over 25% 1T by another source, with another source also saying it was quite similar to around 20, 25%, with the clocks not dissimilar to Zen 4, slightly higher. I'd also previously stated that I was a little skeptical. This just sounded a little bit too good to be true. So I'd actually said previously, I'm kind of expecting around 19, 20% at most. But I've also been told that uh, with Turin, it will actually have higher power limits. And that's 500 watts, not 400 watts. And I was told in Turin's case, it's over 25% improvement easily. However, recently I've been told by a very good source that the IPC gain is higher than Zen 2 to Zen 3, which officially according to AMD was 19%. So this naturally means if it's higher, that's greater than 19%, so that's 20-25%. Uh, and they are stating that's IPC. Now, obviously, this could be wrong, and I'm trying to maintain my own expectations here, but I think around 20 to 25% increase over Zen 4 is likely. That's single thread, but that is also inclusive, again, of clock frequency gains. Now, those will be quite small. Um, because basically it's the same power consumption. So as I just mentioned, I'm expecting maybe one to 300 at the absolute most in terms of megahertz gain. I'm personally expecting one to 200. It's quite early. We are not at final retail silicon, even slightly at this point. So clocks can definitely change. But aside from that, wider, ex wider decoders, I'm about to say wider execution, excuse me, wider decoders, um, this as well as uh, increases in load slash store bandwidth, General improvements to the logic units, new CPU instructions, including FP16 AVX512. I've got quite high confidence about that. Some of this stuff has actually somewhat been confirmed, quote unquote, with a slide from AMD themselves that uh, launched quite a while ago. Now, I want to get into Sarlacc. This is a Halo product of AMD's Strix Point lineup. We'll touch on other SKUs and SP in a moment, but this has been kind of an odd one, honestly, because I've been given multiple configurations. I actually had the original specifications of uh, Sarlacc quite some time ago, and I just sat on them, and then I slightly adjusted the specs, and basically the specs just keep changing slightly. So here's the older specs. This is from a video in June 2023. Zen 5, 16 cores, 32 threads, TSMC 4 and M, although I've also been told possibly this could be free. 20 core AI engine, RDNA 3 Plus or RDNA 3.5. We all know what that is at this point. Um, that's uh, 256 bit LPDDR5 and 32 megabytes of infinity cache. Another source told me that is incorrect and it's 64, so I'm going to put both figures in. However, this is not the same specs that I'm getting now from a couple of sources, including one of the ones who actually told me it was 16 slash 32. I'm now being told it's 8 um, Zen 5 and 8 Zen 5C dense cores. SMT2, high-ish 5 to 6 gigahertz, same memory configuration, basically. 40 RDNA 3 uh, 0.5 compute units, same as previously. 32 megabytes of Infinity cache, which is apparently located on the Infinity Fabric fanout. Up to 120 watt TDP. This is obviously going to be configurable, depending on the uh, nature of the system. Uh, it's going to be a chiplet design with advanced smart shift. And again, there's an AI engine. I do not know which of these configurations, if either is totally accurate or what specs are incorrect. So do consider this a rough configuration. I am somewhat tempted to guess that Zen 5C may be the way this is heading because obviously that would lend itself to a mobile design better. Essentially the feature set between the dense and non-dense as we've seen officially disclosed by AMD is basically the same when it comes to Zen 4 and to my understanding. Zen 5 is essentially the same thing. Uh, release date is late 2024 and will use TSMC's free NM. As for the lower end version of Strict Point, I'm not going to read out all the specs, but you can see them on screen yourself. The main change here, as you can see, is one, over 50% of the compute units have been cut, and two, 
some of the Zen 5C cores have been cut. The release date allegedly is uh, the same. Again, this is using a hybrid RDNA 3 slash 4 design. You know what? <laughs> There's not a huge amount to say about this. I've spoken about it a billion times. This is not for a refresh, which is going to be coming to desktop or anything like that. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for RDNA 4. I've also heard a few small bits of Zen 6, but this stuff is so early, I'm only putting it in here for entertainment slash amusement sake. Do not take this as correct. I have not got the full picture in here. I've heard it could be on the AM6 platform, not AM5, but that's also a little skeptical to me because AMD typically like to support a platform for quite some time, but we'll see. I've heard, though, one thing that does seem quite likely at this point is that in terms of architecture, it's not a big leap over Zen 5. You know, it's essentially Zen 3 to Zen 4 over again. There are refinements to clock frequency, there are refinements to power consumption, but there are some other changes, but it is not a huge IPC leap. That's the best way of saying it. But some of the weirder things I've heard, one, it's a hybrid design. So it's got dense and non-dense processors on the same package. I've been told that AMD would like to raise the core counts and a source that's told me this has been really accurate. I actually received some last minute information that I'm including. One of them is stating that a considered configuration is eight cores for Zen 6 with a further 16 cores as a dense uh, Zen 6 CCD. Whether this is actually true or even if it is true, whether it makes its way to final production, I honestly do not know. There's a lot of moving parts here, including the complexity of the design itself. And this would be an odd configuration. There is a lot of complexity. There could be a lot of other configurations AMD are internally discussing. And of course, how competitive Intel is and what AMD spies, which let's face it, all companies have an idea of what the other one's doing. It's going to be a very interesting thing. I've also heard the possibility of CCD on IOD coming. The best way of describing this is a CCD stacked on, on top of an IO base tile. This is already being tested with some versions of Ryzen internally, but it's very possibly not for Zen 6. This again could just be one of those things that just doesn't make it to the light of day. For example, um, SMT, I think it was SMT4, was internally being tested by AMD, but it never was something that actually was worthwhile because of other, you know, considerations. Um, so they just didn't do it. And as far as I understand it, even um, Zen 4 was considered with a higher core count variant. They tested it internally. And uh, Jim over at Adore TV also mentioned that uh, they were testing with different amounts of cash. Uh, for the, um, I believe it was the L2 up to 2 megabytes for Zen 5. But again, it just didn't happen. And I am pretty sure that he is right based on my own sources. So obviously stuff gets tested internally. They just like to understand what's going on with the chip. And just because a test actually occurs, it doesn't mean that it is actually a product that gets released. So in a recent interview that AMD have uh, put out onto the internet, I actually just covered it recently. It was with Tech Power Up. AMD actually answered a couple of very interesting questions. One of them was increasing the core count. And they said one of the things that's really precluded them doing this is memory bandwidth. And now one thing I've heard about AM6 is that we will actually see DDR6 memory introduced. If you do a quick Google when DDR6 is coming out, it seems that the tentative release date is gonna be around 2026, given Zen 5, of course, is gonna be next year, which as of the time I'm recording this, means it's gonna be 2024. You can see how that would roughly line up. Of course, as with any new technology it will be quite expensive but it would be one way forward there are other things they could do as well like for example just add a crap ton of cash as a requirement but ultimately when you are adding additional processor cores you're asking essentially those processor cores to be fed from somewhere or another and DDR6 memory is certainly one way they could do that I mean I suppose they could also just raise the number of memory channels or something like that but it's going to be very interesting. And in the same interview as well, they did say that things are not exactly certain when it comes to hybrid architectures in the desktop. It seems that they've just not really planned that far ahead at the moment, at least with any degree of certainty. They're definitely experimenting, as I said in this video, but it's going to be very interesting to see what all ends up happening. I think the next couple of years in CPUs is going to be very interesting, especially with all of the rumors from um, uh, from Intel as well as AMD. Obviously, one of the big things with uh, 
Intel is allegedly we will see Arrow Lake's performance cores not feature hyper-threading or SMT, whatever you want to say. So it's going to make comparisons very intriguing, not just with, let's say, AMD to AMD, but also what about, let's say, a 13900K versus whatever is going to be the high end, let's just say, a 15900K in multi-threading. I am very 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 excited though to see what happens in the next few years and hopefully well we can discuss this stuff together with that said guys if you have enjoyed the video you know what to do leave a like and all of that stuff it is youtube after all take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now